You see, abundance isn't just about material wealth. It's a state of being. It's about aligning yourself with the limitless possibilities of the universe. And I stumbled upon this discovery not by chance, but through understanding the intricate dance between our thoughts, our emotions, and our actions. Think of your thoughts as tiny seeds, seeds that, when planted in the fertile soil of your mind, have the power to grow into towering trees. Each thought you have carries its own energy, its own vibration. It's like a ripple in a pond, spreading outward and affecting everything around it. Now imagine these vibrations as the building blocks of your reality. When you think a thought, whether it's positive or negative, hopeful or fearful, it sends out a signal into the universe. This signal doesn't just dissipate into thin air, it lingers, gaining momentum and attracting similar vibrations back to you. Imagine planting seeds of positivity. Thoughts like, I am capable, I am worthy, I am loved. These seeds take root and begin to grow. With each positive thought, you nourish these seeds with belief and intention. You water them with gratitude and optimism, and before long you start to see the fruits of your labor manifesting in your life. Conversely, imagine planting seeds of negativity. Thoughts like, I am not good enough. I will never succeed. I am unworthy. These seeds too take root and grow. They overshadow the fertile ground of your mind with doubt and fear. And as they grow stronger, they shape your reality in ways that reinforce those negative beliefs. Every thought you think is like a brushstroke on the canvas of your life. Over time, these brushstrokes blend together to create a masterpiece or perhaps a chaotic mess. It all depends on the seeds you choose to plant and nurture. Now consider the power of consistency. Just as a gardener tends to their plants daily, you must tend to your thoughts consistently. When you repeatedly think the same thoughts, whether consciously or unconsciously, you strengthen their vibration. This vibration becomes ingrained in your subconscious mind, influencing your beliefs, actions, and ultimately, your reality. Imagine a person who consistently thinks thoughts of abundance, they believe in their own potential. They see opportunities where others see obstacles. They take inspired action towards their goals, knowing that the universe supports their efforts. With each positive thought, they reinforce their belief in a limitless world of possibilities. On the other hand, imagine someone trapped in a cycle of negative thinking. They believe they are doomed to fail. They see scarcity everywhere they turn. Their actions reflect their beliefs, leading to missed opportunities and unfulfilled dreams. Their reality becomes a reflection of their inner turmoil. But here's the beauty of it all. You have the power to change your thoughts. You have the ability to plant new seeds, to nurture them with love and intention. It starts with awareness, becoming conscious of the thoughts that occupy your mind. Are they lifting you up or holding you back? Imagine becoming the master gardener of your mind, cultivating thoughts of positivity, growth, and abundance, tending to your mental garden with care and attention, removing weeds of doubt and fear, and replacing them with seeds of courage and possibility. You might be wondering, how can we access this frequency of abundance? It starts with understanding the power of our subconscious mind. Our subconscious is like a vast reservoir storing every belief, every experience we've ever had. It's here where our habits, our fears, and our self-image reside. The key lies in rewiring our subconscious patterns. You see, our brains are wired to conserve energy. That's why we tend to repeat the same thoughts day after day. But if those thoughts are limiting, thoughts of scarcity, thoughts of lack, they create a feedback loop that keeps us trapped in a cycle of struggle. Now let's dive into something truly remarkable. You have within you the incredible ability to transform your life by changing your thought patterns. This process is not just about wishful thinking, it's about harnessing the power of your mind to reshape your reality. Imagine your mind as a vast landscape where thoughts roam freely like clouds in the sky. 
Some of these thoughts are positive and uplifting, while others may be negative and limiting. These thoughts are deeply rooted in your subconscious mind, shaped by your experiences, upbringing, and beliefs. The exciting part is that you can reshape this landscape. You can plant new seeds of thought and cultivate a mindset that supports your dreams and aspirations. How? Through practices like meditation and mindfulness. Meditation is like a workout for your mind. It's a practice where you sit quietly, focus on your breath, and observe your thoughts without judgment. This simple act of mindfulness allows you to become aware of the patterns of thought that govern your life. It's like shining a light into the dark corners of your mind, uncovering beliefs that may be holding you back. As you meditate regularly, you begin to reprogram your subconscious mind. You replace old limiting beliefs with new empowering ones. For example, if you've always believed that you're not good enough, meditation helps you see this belief for what it is, an outdated story that no longer serves you. You can then consciously choose to affirm new beliefs such as, I am capable, I am worthy of success, and I deserve abundance. Through consistent practice, these affirmations start to sink into your subconscious. They become the new default mode of thinking. Your brain literally rewires itself through a process called neuroplasticity. This means that neural connections strengthen or weaken based on your thoughts and experiences. By focusing on positive thoughts and beliefs, you strengthen pathways in your brain associated with confidence, resilience, and success. Imagine your brain as a garden when you cultivate positive thoughts through meditation and mindfulness, you're planting seeds of growth and possibility. These seeds take root and flourish, creating a fertile ground for new ideas and opportunities to blossom. But it's not just about thinking positively. It's about embodying these new beliefs in your daily life. It's about taking inspired action that aligns with your vision for the future. For instance, if you're working towards a career change, meditation can help you visualize yourself succeeding in your new role. It can give you the confidence to network, apply for jobs, and take steps towards your professional goals. Through mindfulness, you also become more present in the moment. You learn to appreciate the beauty of life as it unfolds. This presence allows you to respond to challenges with clarity and grace rather than reacting impulsively out of fear or doubt. Imagine the impact of this transformation on your overall well-being. As you reprogram your subconscious mind, you may notice improvements in your mental and emotional health. Stress and anxiety begin to lessen as you cultivate a sense of inner peace and resilience. Your relationships deepen as you approach others with empathy and understanding. It's not just about positive thinking. It's about embodying the feelings of abundance. When you truly feel abundant, when you feel gratitude for what you already have, the universe responds. It's a magnetic resonance. Let's explore a transformative technique together. It's something powerful that can change the way you see your life. Close your eyes for a moment and imagine your perfect life. Picture it vividly in your mind's eye. See yourself surrounded by abundance, abundance of wealth, abundance of love, abundance of joy. Imagine living each day with a heart full of gratitude and a mind full of possibilities. As you visualize, let your emotions flow freely. Feel the happiness bubbling inside you as if this ideal life is already yours. Feel the warmth of love and the excitement of success. Visualize yourself in perfect health, full of vitality and energy. See yourself achieving your goals effortlessly with a sense of purpose and fulfillment. The key to making this visualization technique work is to make it as real as possible. The more detailed and vivid your imagination, the more your subconscious mind starts to believe it. Your subconscious doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's imagined. So when you immerse yourself fully in this visualization, your subconscious begins to accept it as your reality. Imagine waking up each morning feeling grateful for the abundance in your life. See yourself smiling, surrounded by loving relationships and meaningful connections. 
Picture yourself doing work that brings you joy and fulfillment, making a positive impact in the world. Visualize your ideal home, whether it's a cozy apartment, a serene countryside retreat, or a bustling city penthouse. Feel the comfort and peace that comes with having a place that feels like your sanctuary. Imagine your financial situation thriving beyond your wildest dreams. See yourself enjoying financial freedom where money flows effortlessly into your life. Visualize yourself making wise investments, creating multiple streams of income, and sharing your wealth with others. Feel the sense of accomplishment and satisfaction that comes from achieving your goals. Whether it's starting your own business, traveling the world, or learning new skills, see yourself embracing every opportunity with confidence and determination. As you continue to visualize, pay attention to how your body responds. Notice any feelings of warmth, relaxation, or excitement. These physical sensations are signs that your subconscious mind is aligning with your vision. Now imagine your relationships flourishing with love and harmony. See yourself surrounded by supportive friends and family members who uplift and inspire you. Visualize yourself communicating with clarity and compassion, building strong bonds based on trust and mutual respect. Now this isn't just wishful thinking, this is quantum physics. Science has shown us that our thoughts and emotions create measurable changes in our bodies and in our surroundings. We are literally shaping our reality with every thought. Let's explore how we can maintain a mindset of abundance over the long term. It's not just about a one-time effort. It's about creating a daily practice that nurtures and reinforces this mindset of possibility. Imagine your mind as a garden that needs regular care and attention. Just as a gardener tends to their plants daily, you too must tend to your thoughts and beliefs consistently. This daily practice is essential for cultivating a mindset of abundance. Firstly, it starts with awareness. Become mindful of your thoughts and emotions throughout the day. Notice when you start to slip into old patterns of doubt or fear. These patterns are like weeds that can choke out the growth of abundance in your life. When you catch yourself thinking negatively, gently redirect your thoughts. This is where your vision of abundance becomes crucial. Close your eyes and visualize your ideal life once again. See yourself living in abundance, whether it's financial wealth, loving relationships, vibrant health, or fulfilling work. As you visualize, allow yourself to feel the emotions associated with this vision. Feel the joy, gratitude, and excitement as if your ideal life is already a reality. The more you immerse yourself in this positive imagery, the more you strengthen the neural pathways in your brain associated with abundance. Next, reinforce this practice with affirmations and positive self-talk. Affirmations are short, positive statements that you repeat to yourself daily. For example, I am deserving of abundance, I attract prosperity into my life, or I am grateful for all the abundance that surrounds me. These affirmations help to reprogram your subconscious mind and align your thoughts with your desired reality. Another powerful tool is gratitude. Cultivate a daily gratitude practice where you focus on the blessings in your life. Take a few moments each day to reflect on what you're grateful for, whether it's a supportive friend, a beautiful sunset, or a delicious meal. Gratitude shifts your focus from scarcity to abundance, reminding you of the abundance that already exists in your life. Consistency is key. Just as you wouldn't expect a garden to flourish with sporadic care, you can't expect your mindset of abundance to thrive without daily attention. Make it a habit to engage in these practices every day, even if it's just for a few minutes. Abundance is your birthright. It's not reserved for a select few. It's available to each and every one of us. The universe is infinitely abundant, and so are you. Now here's the key to lasting wealth. It's not just about running after money or things you own. It's about connecting yourself with the natural flow of abundance. 
When you're in sync, when your thoughts, feelings, and actions resonate with this flow, you draw wealth to you effortlessly. Imagine wealth not just as money in your bank account, but as a state of being. It's about feeling abundant in all areas of your life, your relationships, health, opportunities, and experiences. When you align your thoughts with positivity and possibility, you open yourself to receive the richness of life. It starts with your mindset. Instead of focusing solely on lack or scarcity, shift your perspective to one of abundance. Believe that there is more than enough for everyone, including yourself. This belief alone can transform how you approach opportunities and challenges. Next, align your emotions with gratitude and appreciation. When you genuinely appreciate what you have, whether it's a supportive friend, a comfortable home, or good health, you attract more reasons to be grateful. This positive emotional state acts like a magnet, drawing more blessings into your life. Then, take inspired action. This means acting on your goals and dreams from a place of alignment and positivity. When your actions are in harmony with your beliefs and emotions, you create momentum towards achieving your desires. Opportunities and resources seem to flow towards you effortlessly because you are in tune with the energy of abundance. So abundance comes in many forms. It's not just about financial wealth, though that's certainly part of it. It's about abundance of health, of love, of opportunities. When you open yourself up to the possibilities, miracles happen. So then, is it possible then that that person in the same brain circuitry, in the same emotions of the past, are viewing their life through the lens of the past and they're not seeing things how they are, they're actually perceiving and seeing things how they are, and they're telling a story in their mind that's actually causing them to perceive life equal to that story. Are you with me still? So then, you ask that person, so why are you this way? And they'd say, I'm so glad you asked, because I get to talk about my past. And as they talk about the incidents in their past, would you agree then that they're saying, that was the event that changed me, and I haven't actually been able to change since that event? That event has defined me as the person I am today, yes or no? Now, the research on memory says, after a period of time, that story that they tell of their past, 50% of it isn't even the truth. So they're making stuff up. They are reliving a miserable life they never even had, just to reaffirm, to recreate the emotions, to excuse themselves from changing. So then, most people then, they may say with the 5% of their conscious mind, I want a new life, I want a new relationship, I want a new career, or I am healthy. But if 95% of who they are is subconsciously programmed into the past, then that thought of their health, that thought of their wealth, is never going to make it to the body because the body is programmed into the past. How many people understand? So then if you teach a person then how to be defined by a vision of the future, instead of the memories of the past, then they would have to really start thinking differently. Would you agree? They would have to start making different choices than the choices that they always make, yes or no. They're going to have to start doing different things and breaking certain habits, and that's gonna be uncomfortable, yes or no. Because the body is gonna say, why are we doing this? It's so much more fun suffering than going out for a walk into joy. I don't know if I believe in joy, I believe in suffering. The body goes back. And so that person would have to stop talking certain ways. They would have to start staying away from certain experiences with certain people. You know what I'm talking about, yes? They would have to examine their emotional state every single day. They'd have to stay conscious of their emotional state because the moment they started feeling suffering, they're just disconnected from the energy of their future. They're back to the energy and the emotions of their past. So then, teaching people then how to be defined by a vision of the future every single day means they're going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be unfamiliar. There's going to be some uncertainty and you may not be able to predict the next moment because you're no longer feeling like you. 
that's the moment you just left the known and you stepped into the unknown. Are you with me still? Now, if the body has been conditioned into the familiar past or the predictable future and the body has become the mind of the past or the predictable future, would you agree? Then the body would say, what are you doing? And the body would say, listen, let's get you thinking like you've been thinking. 90% of the thoughts that we think on a daily basis are the same thoughts as the day before. So if you think that your thoughts have something to do with your destiny and 90% of your thoughts are the same known thoughts that you're always thinking, then your life should stay the same because the same thoughts lead to the same choices. The same choices lead to the same behaviors. The same behaviors create the same experiences. The same experiences produce the same emotions. Those same emotions tend to influence the way we think and our biology, our neurocircuitry, our neurochemistry, our hormones, and even our gene expression is equal to how we think, how we act, and how we feel. And how you think, how you act, and how you feel is called your personality. And your personality creates your personal reality. That's it. If you want to create a new personal reality, a new life, you're going to have to change your personality. And you've got to start thinking about what you've been thinking about and change it. You've got to become aware of your unconscious habits and behaviors, even how you speak. And you have to look at the emotions that you live by every single day and decide, do these emotions belong in my future? So many people try to create a new life as the same person. In order to create a new personal reality, you've got to change your personality. So the principle in neuroscience says that nerve cells that fire together, wire together. Thinking the same way, making the same choices, demonstrating the same actions, creating the same experiences that stamp the same networks of neurons into the same patterns, all for the familiar feeling called you. And you do that for 10 years in a row. Well, you're going to hardwire your brain into a very finite signature because you're firing and wiring that way. And that box in the brain, that becomes our personality, becomes our identity. And by the time we're 35 years old, for the most part, we've done something so many times that the body now knows how to do it as well as the mind. And that's a habit. So we have these unconscious programs of behaviors, automatic habits, redundant emotional reactions, hardwired beliefs, perceptions, attitudes that function just like a computer program. You press go and it runs automatically. When it comes time to change, thinking positively is going to do nothing because your body has been conditioned for the most part into a program in the past. Thought never makes it to the body because the body's on a different program. How do we begin to influence the body so that the thought actually produces some type of change? Think about it. If you think an unhappy thought, you're going to feel unhappy. If you think you're a failure, you're going to feel like a failure. Once you feel like a failure, you're going to think you're a failure. And people get caught in these loops of thinking and feeling and feeling and thinking. And that redundancy is a conditioning process because all you need is an image or a picture or a thought and a feeling and a response, stimulus response. And so people tend to condition their brain and body into the past. When it comes time to change, you've got to leave that familiar territory. And any choice that you make, if you said, hey, I'm going to eat a better diet, I'm going to wake up early and work out, I'm going to do meditation, the moment you decide to do something differently, get ready because it's going to feel uncomfortable. It's going to feel unfamiliar. There's going to be some uncertainty. You're not going to be able to predict the next moment. That means you've left your known biology and you're stepping into the unknown. Theoretically, that sounds great. But if the body has been conditioned into a familiar feeling, it's in the known. The moment you take it outside the familiarity, it wants to go back to where it's comfortable. Repeating it over and over again is sustaining or maintaining those connections, and that's called memory. So they memorized what they were doing by physically practicing or personalizing what they learned. Make sense? Standard simple. It took the second group of people and they said, listen, we want you to play two hours a day for two weeks. 
we're going to scan your brain before and after. But you know what we're going to do? We're not going to tell you how to play anything. You just come and do whatever you want, play whatever you want. So at the end of two weeks, guess what happened to them? Nothing. You know why? Because they couldn't remember what they had learned the day before, and they couldn't remember what they played the day before, and they had no structure. They got no instruction and no knowledge to be able to apply it to make some steady circuits. It took the third group of people, and they said, listen, don't even show up. Don't even create your day. Same thing. Nothing happens. Last group of people, they said, listen, we want you to come two hours a day for two weeks. We're going to show you these one-handed exercises. But instead of you physically playing the piano, we want you to mentally rehearse over and over again those exercises. We know you're going to get tired, so we'll nudge you and we'll keep you awake. But you practice for two hours a day and you keep repeating those. At the end of two weeks, they rescanned their brain and guess what happened? Same area of the brain lit up as if they were actually playing the scales. Now, you know what that means? They grew new circuits in their brain just by thinking about it, just by thinking, just by rehearsing. Now, every time we learn something new, we make new circuits in the brain. If you learn anything new, learning is making a new connection in the brain, new neurological connection. Memory is maintaining or sustaining those connections, keeping them alive. And the only way that we maintain and sustain connections in the brain is by repetition. Repetition allows the neurons to develop a long-term relationship. So these people, every single day, made it the most important thing. They gave up their social engagements. They gave up television. They said, I'm going to rehearse. I'm going to mentally rehearse the greatest ideal of myself every single day. And as long as I keep doing it every day, what's going to happen to those circuits? They're going to light up and become the more sustainable circuits to act as a platform of who they will become in the future. During this process of rehearsal, while they were sitting down rehearsing who they were going to be, just like the piano players rehearsing, when you feel that deep, strong emotion, nothing and no one can stop you from reaching your goal. The universe will lead you to wealth. When you feel unlimited, abundant, and worthy, you teach your body to understand what your mind knows. This will bring things to you. You become a magnet for your destiny. You don't have to go anywhere to get what you want. Instead, you bring it to you. You match your energy with the potential in the quantum field, like tuning a radio to the right frequency. If you keep feeling this way every day, the new job, house, or relationship will find you because you are the magnet attracting these experiences. The universe only gives us what we think we deserve. To create a new life, you need to change your personality. This means thinking differently and changing your habits. Look at your daily emotions and decide if they belong in your future. Most people try to create a new life without changing themselves, and it doesn't work. You need to become someone new. Choose a new possibility in the quantum field and feel it deeply every day. Your body won't know the difference between the real experience and the emotion created by your thoughts. This will signal new genes and change your body as if the experience has already happened. Epigenetics research supports this. Every day, condition your body to feel the future emotions. Your body will change to match your future. You won't need to go anywhere to get what you want. If you believe your thoughts create your future and you think the same thoughts every day, your life won't change. If you're not focused on a future vision, you're stuck in past memories. The way you think and feel can change your outer world. This is a process of learning, practicing, and experiencing. When you start seeing coincidences and opportunities, you'll notice how your inner changes affect your outer world. You'll pay attention to what you're doing inside and do it again. You'll believe more in your power to create your life and less in being a victim. The same thoughts lead to the same choices, behaviors, and experiences which create the same feelings. These feelings drive your thoughts, affecting your biology, brain, hormones, and genes. How you think, act, and feel is your personality, which creates your reality. Use tools like vision boards to feel the emotions of abundance now. Don't wait for the new car, house, or relationship to feel good. Feel the emotion as if it has already happened. 
when you get up from a creative process feeling grateful, joyful, and passionate. You won't be looking for your future because it will feel like it's already here. If you feel self-limiting emotions, you'll feel separated and start looking for your future again. If you're waiting, you're not creating. So move into a state of being where your thoughts and feelings align with your desired future.